Welcome to Live Live! Woo! And he is. And so with that, we're going to move into the message for today. Which, by the way, God thing wasn't planned, but we're going to talk about the fork in the road. And I always love this illustration of literally a fork in the road. But what I want to talk to you about is we all have decisions to make in our life, right? All of us have decisions on a daily basis. Some are big, some are small. And normally, if you guys are anything like me, when it comes to the big decisions, we're pretty good at asking God for help. This is a life-changing decision, you know. I'm sure David prayed about going to Lincoln Technical College. You know, and lots of people are praying about decisions they've got in their life that are huge. And we're pretty good at that. We realize when we're in over our head, the small decisions we can handle. Right? Well, let me give you some examples of, of what I consider a small decision. Whether or not to take a break. You know, you're at work, you're working, someone says, hey, you want to take a break? Your answer is yes or no. Small decision, right? How about this? Trading a shift. Someone says, hey, um, I need you to work for me. I need to this day off or I need to switch something with you. You're like, yeah, no problem. I, I'm free that day. Not a big deal. How about this one? Going to the post office. Whether or not to go to the post office. Those are three seemingly very small decisions except for the fact that they happened on September 11, 2001. And these three people are the ones that made the decisions, and they're alive today because of those decisions they made. Robert Herzog decided to go to the post office before going to work. Because he did that, he missed his connecting train and was five minutes late for work and was walking up to the World Trade Center and saw the plane go into his office. Elise O'Kane was a stewardess. And because of a typo, she ended up getting on the wrong flight and tried to trade everyone except for the one that flew into the Pennsylvania field. She didn't get that one traded because somebody else needed it more than she did. Gur Epstein never took a break before lunch in her entire career. But that morning someone said, come smoke a cigarette with me. And she said, all right. And by the time she came out the building at the bottom. There was already a plane in it at the top. The floor above hers. Our decisions matter. Our decisions matter. And now, I say that and I know you inevitably, be, inevitably get into the free will versus predestination talk at some point when you say our decisions matter. And for those of you who don't know, I'll just kind of give you the Steve Russell brief. Free will is a concept of the choices. We get, we're free to do whatever we want to do. And God has no control over what we do. Predestination is kind of the opposite, saying that we were predestined from birth to do these certain things. Okay? And that's very generalized, and that's very um, just 30,000 foot level, not getting into any detail. I will tell you something. Those two things are not salvation critical. And what I mean by that is, when you get to heaven and you're standing before Jesus Christ, He's not going to go, so what's your position on free will or predestination? And, you know, it's just not going to happen, okay? There's nowhere in the Bible where that's going to happen. I think it's important that we study enough, and I think it's important that we care enough to research it and develop an opinion for ourselves, whether it be right or wrong. But I want to tell you this, Lifeline's policy always been, has always been, we're not going to bicker over stuff that's not salvation critical. If you want to have your opinion, and I want to have my opinion, and we want to talk it out, that's great. Um, you're probably not going to convince me. I'm probably not going to convince you. And we need to just understand that and understand that um, the, the conversation I've had with people is the 15 minutes you spent arguing with someone, a, a brother in Christ, about whether this or that, you could have been teaching someone who doesn't know about Christ about Christ. And that's what I think is important. So, just, I'm not, I'm not right, okay? I know I'm not right. But I will tell you what I believe. And um, 
what I believe is basically a hybrid between the two. I think that God winds the clock and sets some systems in motion to work on autopilot. I also think that we are given free will to do what we want, and I think that God intervenes from time to time. And um, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples, um, one from real life and one from the Bible. The, the one I go to is Pharaoh, and, and Moses going to Pharaoh, and, he, and, and basically to summarize the story, God tells Moses, go talk to Pharaoh, tell him this. He's going to say this. Pharaoh's going to, you need to go do this. Pharaoh's going to say this. You need to go do this. Pharaoh's going to say this. And so what I think is God already knows what's going to happen. God already knows what's going to happen. I also think that Pharaoh had a choice to make, and he was free to make that choice. That being said, go research it on your own. Develop your own opinion. I'm not going to try to convince you I'm right, because, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not willing to bet my salvation on it, and luckily I don't have to. And the good news is, whether we believe in predestination, free will, something in between, I hope we can agree on this point. We want to live in God's will. Can we all agree on that? That whatever, whatever way it happens, we want to do what God wants us to do. Amen? Are we with me? Okay. So, let's read from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Right? Simple. Sunday school stuff. Elementary level, right? Just trust in the Lord. Do not depend on your own understanding. He will show you which path to take. James 1 through 5. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Simple. Simple stuff. All we've got to do is ask, and we'll receive so here's the problem. And here's the problem I think we find because we say, well, it's not that simple because I ask and I don't get answers or I get confusing answers or I get conflicting answers. We started by saying that we're usually good at asking for help on the big things, right? Anyone else besides me? Show of hands. Ask for big, big things, maybe not the small things. The other thing I hope that we learn today is we don't really know what things are small things and what things are big things because I wouldn't have thought the decision on whether to go to the post office or not was a big thing. I wouldn't have thought whether to take a break or not was a big thing. I wouldn't have thought missing a shift on a certain flight was a big thing. You don't have to raise your hand, but... Do you have a person in your life that only contacts you when you need something? Like, like when the phone rings and you're like, oh. right? I mean, you know who they are. They're friends or their family or, you know, and, and it's just like, hmm, I think I'm just going to let that go to voicemail. Now, if, if you call and get my voicemail, that's not you. Okay. But, um, well, one of you maybe. <laughs> I just love, I love walking into a room and going, wow, one of you is really this. And just letting them all look around going, I wonder who it could be. I just do that to have fun. I don't mean that. Um, but we all have that, right? That one person that the phone rings and, or, or you see them coming down the street or maybe you, you know you've done it. You're in Walmart and they're in the other aisle and you're like, mm, I got to go back to electronics for a while. <laughs> Suddenly remember something I need in the back of the store. Um, we've all done it. My question to you is, are you that person to God? Are you that person to God? Right? Because that's what we said. When it's a big thing, I call. The small things I can handle. It's kind of like the person that bugs you all the time, right? They don't call and say, you know, I think about brushing my teeth. When do you know if that's a good idea? No, it's, I can't make the rent. Or, I need a ride. Or, you know, whatever it is in your situation. I want you to think about that for a second. Are you that person to God? Are you the person that when God's little prayer phone goes off, He goes, Ah, oh, Steve. Oh, man, I know what He wants. He just needing help again. I want you to read, you know, you all know that I refer to James as the book of ouch, okay? And, and this is why, because I read, I read you James 1 through 5. Well, unfortunately for the rest of us, it continues. 
So James, or James 1, 5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. 6 through 8 says, But when you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as the wave of a sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to re receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. I'd much rather read just five and stop, right? Whatever you want, just ask and you'll get it. No, it's on us, right? It's on us. We have to put our faith in God. That's just like Randy said. If we are dependent on God, if we've got our complete trust in God, if we are talking to God all the time, if we've got that relationship with Jesus Christ, then when we call, James 1, 5 applies. If we are the long lost relative that just heard God won the lottery and are calling to see how much we're going to get, His answer is nothing. Nothing. And I'll just make a little cultural societal thing here. I get, I get a lot of negativity because when I say I'm going to do something, like if I say, if you do this, then this will happen. And that person does this, guess what? That happens. And I think our society as a whole is not really used to that. Not really used to that at all. I think they think, you know, if you speed, you will get a ticket. Maybe I can get out of it. Maybe they'll let me off with a warning. Maybe they'll, whatever, you know. Maybe if I don't pay my rent, they won't kick me out this month. You're always hoping for the exception. I think our God is a loving God. I also believe what He says. And I also believe if He says here in the book of James that if you don't come to me completely dependent on me, the answer is no. I also believe that when He... Uh, so how do we get in God's will? We have to build that relationship with Jesus Christ, right? We have to be a friend of Jesus. We have to understand who He is. And how do we build a relationship with Jesus? I'll submit to you guys that we all know. We already know what it is. Randy talked about it a little bit. The problem is not knowing how to do it. The problem is doing it. The problem is doing it. And here, I'll just break it down super simple so even I can understand it. Word works tithe and time. That's how you get in God's will. Word works tithe and time. Let me unpack that a little bit. Word means get in your Bible. Get in your Bible. We offer several Bible studies. We've offered several other Bible studies. We're giving you the opportunity to get your Bible. You don't have to do it with us. You can do it on your own. You can do it with your friends at work. You can do it with your friends at school. You can listen to Daily Audio Bible. The important thing is getting in the Word. And yes, I had this slide before I talked to you this morning, Randy. Works. Works. The Bible says, I will know them by the love they show. That's Steve Russell's paraphrase of whatever. But look it up. That's what it says. They will... Will people know if you're a Christian? You know, you've heard that saying of if... If being a Christian was a crime, would do you have enough evidence to convict you? Right? Once again, Lifeline gives you plenty of opportunity to do works. You don't have to do it on your own. You can go ring a bell. You can go bag meals. You can go cut wood. Bring stuff for the food pantry. The, the third thing is tithe, which means 10%. Okay? Here's how the world should work. You should get a paycheck. You should put 10% off to God and 10% into your savings account and spend 80%. That's how, in a very stripped down thing, it should work. I would say probably 100% of us don't do that. That's how it should work. Why is that important? Because if you read back to the Word, if you read back into the Bible and realize where that came from, it's from the first fruits of the harvest, right? That's where this originated. It's about giving God your best right off the top. 
It's, it's an act of submission. It's saying, I've got this paycheck and I know everything I get comes from you. And so the first 10% goes right back to you. We always give you the opportunity to tithe, by the way. Just clear that up. So time, time is the, the other one. And I think time's a big one. I think time is what affects tithe word, works and word. Let me ask you a question. What percentage of the time you have comes from God? All of it. All of it. The Bible says we are not promised our next breath. We live like we do. We go on like we do. We don't worry about the sun coming up tomorrow. But all of it comes from God. Let me ask you another question. When was the last time you told someone, I can't go to that movie or I can't come visit you or I can't do this or that because I need to do something for my church or I need to do something for God or I need to work in a ministry? If you can't remember the last time you said that, maybe we need to look at how time's spent. And I know you get tired of hearing the same old thing. But we give opportunities here at Lifeline. And there's opportunities everywhere to serve Jesus. To reach others for Him. And it's important that you take those opportunities. Why is it important? Because I believe we are at a fork in the road. It's not about the little decisions or the big decisions anymore. I think we've got one decision to make. From Matthew 7, it says, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for many who choose that way. But gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult. Only few ever find it. Okay? That's back to what I was saying earlier about, I think God's got some absolutes going on there. In fact, if you go to the words of Jesus here a little bit later in Matthew 7, it says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Let me read that again so you can listen to what the words say. Okay, I want to clarify something here. To know that Jesus is Lord, Lord, you would have to know about Jesus, that Jesus exists, maybe have some sort of faith in Jesus. And Jesus is telling you, if you call out my name, that's not enough to get you in. That's not enough to get you in. Only those who actually do the will of my Father will enter. The decision is ours here this morning. Knowing about Jesus is not enough. Satan knows about Jesus. His demons know about Jesus. Atheists know about Jesus. Knowing about Jesus is not enough. It takes knowing Jesus and doing the will of His Father. It's the only way. It's very clear in the Bible. It is the only way to get to heaven. And I will tell you that there's people sitting in churches all over the world, in West Plains, United States, all over the world, who say they know Jesus and will fall under the trap of Matthew 7 where they cry out at the end Jesus, Jesus and he says I don't remember you and I'm not trying to use scare tactics not at all I'm just reading you what the Bible says and what I think it means we cannot pretend to be Christians any longer we can't go through the motions any longer. The risk is too high. As Stephen said on Wednesday night, if you don't take this seriously, then you haven't read enough about hell. Because hell is real. And the Bible says, if we aren't saved by Jesus Christ, that's where we're going. And you say, well, all it, all it takes is a commitment. It does, initially. And then there's all these biblical things we've got to do. We've got to do our works. Accepting Jesus Christ gets us in the door. The 
question is, do you want to be the person who just does the bare minimum? Or do you want to be the person that Jesus says, good and faithful servant? What path are you going to take? If you would bow your heads. I don't know whether you're a Christian or not this morning, but I want to give you the opportunity to do so. It's very simple. It's a good first step. You can accept Jesus Christ right where you sit. If you want to do it, just pray this prayer along with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I don't know you, and I want to. I don't deserve you, but I need you. This morning, I want to give my life over to you. I want you to take control of my life, and I want to make a decision to follow you. Lord, I ask that you guide me every step of my life from here on out. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you've made that decision this morning and want to talk to me about it or want to talk to anyone, or would just like for me to pray for you, with all heads bowed, just raise your hand, catch my eye. I'll pray for you this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we ask that you guide us. We ask that you keep us from being lukewarm Christians. We ask that you supercharge our desire to get into the Word, our desire to do works for you, our desire to give our first fruits to you and our desire to spend time working for you and on you. Help us to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.